Okay, so what we've got here is basically just sketches trying to get sort of hairstyles right. The face is, people call it mangry anime. I do. You do. Very big eyes. Yeah, very big eyes. I think by that time we'd decided that she was going to have slightly larger than life eyes. It was not not overly cartoony, although this picture is, but I knew that the, the, the final 3D model wouldn't be overly cartoony. Um, but yes, a little bit bigger, a little bit more exaggerated features. The hair, the problem with hair is um, ridiculous because the when you draw something, what looks good for that picture at that time, you may do a little bit of flicky flyaway hair here or there, wouldn't necessarily work in real life. It wouldn't necessarily work when you turn it into a 3D model. So actually drawing a hairstyle and actually getting that interpreted into a 3D model is actually really, really hard. And I know a lot of the modelers here had an awful lot of trouble with some of the wild and wacky hairstyles that we gave. Because went her. through a lot of different variations. We did go through a lot of different variations of hairstyles, long hair, short hair. I don't think we ever had a bald, but I'm sure we would have got there eventually. And we had a bald in bugs. Yes, we had her a... hair separates like a wig. <laughs> yes. And you can see the inside of her head is hollow. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so it's very hard. The, the transition between a 2D picture and its interpretation into a 3D model is very is a very tricky thing. Is to that get, why to you draw right. the same character in different poses? You do. I, I've not done too much of that because all the character artists, all the 3D modelers here at Rare, are, are all artists in their own right. So it's nice to allow them a bit of freedom to actually you know, put their own sort of stamp on something. So I sort of figure the concept art is there to give direction, give an overall feel to what you want, but it gives them enough room to do their own thing, basically. So these picture, this picture here is just, well, I mean, her face is not as it was. I don't think her face is as it ever was in the game. It's just a, a, a quite a sort of generic -y sort of girl face. Um, this was more trying to get the, the sort of the, the hairstyle right, how the hair flapped over the face, how much did it flap over the eyes. You know, it was tucked behind the ear so you could see a little doodah communicator bunny link, uh, bunny link TM. Got name named. Um, so it looks like a giant bunny ear. Uh, which is, which, I mean, that is a, basically a standard anime staple, that sort of little aerial thing that sticks out the back. And the so weird just, thing is, now it's become like a really popular thing. Like I know. You go around well, shopping centres and you see people with Bluetooth headsets. <laughs> this is it. I mean, the, th the thing is, originally, I, I made it quite big because there's no point in making a really teeny tiny thing because on the, on the model in the game, you'll never ever see it. It will just dis disappear. So you make it over, you exaggerate it, but of course now it looks really clunky in comparison yeah. to the, the Bluetooth headsets you get now. So it's really weird. It's like, oh, 20 years in the future, but it's bigger than the ones you, people but are wearing you see now. everyone you walking around with Bluetooth headsets now, you, you see them walking around town and they're talking to themselves, but if you don't notice the headset, they look mm. like lunatics. But of course you can't do that in the game. She needs to have something that's recognisable. It needs to stand out so you can actually refer to it and people can see it. So is again, this, and Is this something that again went over with the other characters? So Jack's got one as well, hasn't he? Um, yes, I think... Uh, Jack and Chandra. Jack doesn't. hasn't got one, but Chandra has yeah. got one. I'm not quite sure why Jack hasn't got one. I think Jack's got a, a standard radio sort of clip clip to his, his sort of oh, he's old jacket school. because That's he's because he's old school yeah uh, but Chandra's def definitely got one and again it's a it's a Datadyne product because we tried to make it so that Datadyne was sort of invasive into all everyday sort of life so they make all the devices this is an ironic yeah. sort of twist see there that Joe Joe's fighting against Datadyne but in fact she uses all the products that they make and uses all the operating systems they create as well but uh, yeah so hair Lots of lots of designs of hair, lots of drawings of hair, but in the end, it's uh, it's up to the three D artist to sort of tweak a design and make it work. Yeah, this one's more of a this one is more of a study, um, trying to show uh, although the face, the actual design of the eyes and stuff like that isn't really what was intended for the final picture. It's intended to show the sort of proportions of the face. Yeah, 
in relationship to the hair and maybe sort of the bunny link and everything so this one you could actually well the modeler could actually take this import it into into the 3d package and just sort of work around it they can use it as a reference we used to do this on on lots of characters as well you do the what's called a t pose where they've got their arms stretched out sort of either side of them um, the uh, the 3D modeler can actually sort of take that and use that as a basis for the model. So this this one's a bit more of a, a, a proper study, a bit more of a proper reference study. Um, I think uh, it, her head and her proportions have changed quite a bit since then, because the the other thing is um, when you do a stylized character, uh, for instance. It, um, cartoon characters especially sort of Japanese anime characters and that the actual proportions of the body are a lot different from a normal person we're of course using motion capture here which is motion referenced from a real person so you can't exaggerate things too much because the bones and the the actual markers for the movement are in the are in real are in a real place yeah. you know they are a, a person's arm is as long as a person's arm is you can't make their arm twice as long because the the, mo the motion won't work on it, the animation won't work on it. So you're trying to find a balance between creating something that's stylized, precisely, yet realistic. -ish. Yeah, yeah, Re well, realistic, cartoony, not too stylized. Oh, it's a, it's a mixer of everything. It's just a fine line. It's a balance. You start with a picture, goes to the model, you tweak the model, you tweak, you do another picture, you tweak the model. Um, so lots of lots of sketches like this come out, uh, just trying to trying to get the proportions right, but ones that actually work with the system that's used in the game. Okay, so this is a bit more, I think, although these look a lot more sort of anime-ish in the eyes, uh, the actual hairstyle and whatever is a lot more what we ended up with. Uh, the drawing is obviously, you can see the segments in the hair are very, very defined because basically these were going to be replicated using polygons. Very, very difficult to get polygon hair looking right, especially if it needs to move. You've got layers like intersecting, overlapping. Um, it's very, very difficult to get it to look right. So these were just sort of sketches trying to show what it would look like from different angles. But even here, if you look at the front on pose and you turned it sideways, mm. it, it wouldn't look like that because... You cheated us. I cheated us. And it's, very, it's a very, very difficult thing to do. It's a very, very difficult thing to not cheat when you draw a picture because you tend to just gravitate towards what you think looks cool and not what is absolutely correct. It's the old Mickey Mouse thing, isn't it? You know, his ears are flat on no matter what way you look at him. It obviously wouldn't work like that in real life. The blonde streak really was a last minute thing. That was very, very late in the day that the blonde streak came in. Again, it was just looking at a character, is she iconic enough? Is she got something, has she got all the elements that people will, they'll recognize her straight away. Also the fact that we're putting her in different outfits throughout the game is uh, if you put her in a bikini, if you put her in a dress, if you put her in a character institute outfit can you immediately all tell that that is Joanna Dark yeah. so we're just putting all these, I mean she's even got a beauty spot on these pictures here but um, which obviously morphed into the tattoo at a later date so it's just trying to find all those little tricks so that people will actually remember there, there are other red-headed game characters out there um, I remember the girl from Dino Crisis yeah. we looked at that quite a lot um, how can you make another red-haired girl uh, be distinctive? You know, it's the hairstyle. It's you know having things like the, it's the, you know maybe the colour of the eyes, maybe the shape of the eyes, and also things like the tattoo on it. So this, this is just another study, one of many, 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 many that we did, just to try and get it right.